Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Knit by Day podcast. My name is Deja and we are officially back home in Wilmington, North Carolina. For those of you who don't know, I believe most of you do already, but those of you who do not know, we just spent a year in Kansas while my husband finished up an internship smack dab in the middle of Kansas. Um, and people keep asking how bad it was. It had some good moments, but <laughs> Kansas is the only state I will never return to. So take with that what you will. Um, I have so many knitting things to share with you today and my in-laws are in town. So getting everyone out of the house at the same time has been a bit of a challenge and I'm on a bit of a time crunch. So I'm gonna talk about all of the things that I possibly can and hopefully it all gets done. If not, then I'll be back maybe in a week to finish on up but I think we can get it all done and then that'll just be that. Um, the reason I think I can get most of it done is you've seen most of this. So we talked about in all of the last one or two podcasts, I have been really just working on getting things off my needles. So all of the projects I showed today, you have already seen. So I may not go over all of the finer details of what yarn I used or what I love about it, what I hate about it, etc. I'm just going to show you progress and if things come up as I'm talking about them, then we'll chat about it. But any of those like fine details are going to be in the description box in the show notes. So don't feel like you are missing out. You don't have to go search the internet for it. I am currently looking down at my show notes to figure out where we want to start. And obviously we're going to start with finished objects. I'm thinking, yes, thinking we're gonna start with the flint shawl because it is done. Photos have been taken. Um, for those of you who do not know, this is a pattern of my own design. This is the flint shawl, named after the Flint Hills of Kansas. One of Kansas's best features. Um, and they're really known for like being simple but stunning, which is why I decided to name the shawl this because it is very, very simple. It's really just some fading and some brioche sections and an asymmetrical construction. Um, and yeah, I love this. Um, I would put it on for you, but it's going to create a lot of static on the microphone and it's just kind of not worth it. Um, so I might pop a picture up here if I remember to do so in editing. Um, but yeah, really, really excited to have this off my needles. I did send it to the tech editor. I've already gotten my first draft back, um, running through just a few edits, and then I'm gonna send that to her. Um, as, I, as she and I are kind of going back and forth with edits, I am looking for test knitters. So I will go ahead and drop the form to apply to be a test knitter in this description box. And then if you're interested in test knitting the flint shawl, it will be there for you. It is a fingering weight shawl for anyone who is curious. And it takes, uh, the fade I used was five colors, but you are welcome to use two colors. You're welcome to use three colors, so long as you have enough yarn. And I would say, so I used five different colors and I had about a 50 gram skein of each. I mean, so I would say if you have 300 yards, I mean 300 grams of fingering weight yarn, you are golden and you can do this shawl. Yeah, so if you're interested, apply below. I have my Maggie sweater on here to talk about next and I finished my Maggie sweater. So um, those of you who have seen previous episodes of the podcast will have seen the Maggie sweater. Um, it is by Rinya of Comfort Zone Knits and it is a gorgeous sweater that I had the pleasure of testing it, knitting. Um, it's done, it fits me so well, I love, love, love it. And as I was packing up all my winter stuff as we were moving, I put it in a vacuum seal bag and so now it is under my bed and I am not undoing that vacuum seal to get the sweater out. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys know for the most part what it looks like. On the last episode of the podcast, I had finished everything but one sleeve. So you can just imagine it with both sleeves. It's fantastic. Um, and then of course it'll make a reappearance in the fall or in the winter when it's actually cool enough to wear it, um, which is the best part anyway. 
Um, sometimes if I just hold up a sweater, it doesn't really do it as much justice as if I actually wear it, I think. So you will get to see it worn. The next finished object I have, finishing things. These, I cannot remember if I had started them on by the last episode of the podcast, but I do know that I talked, say hello to Weston. This is my Whippet mix. He is anxious all the time. And he's a mama's boy. So he's gonna sit as close to me as humanly possible. Um, Anyway, I know that I talked about knitting these, but I don't know that I had actually cast them on uh, on that last episode of the podcast. But these are the Rhinebeck Rumi socks. They are a pretty simple, repetitive pattern. It gives the socks a lot of texture, but it is not very hard to do, and I don't think it's overwhelming at all. Um, so love, love this pattern. It, the actual socks fit me great. And this is knit out of my hand dyed yarn. Um, the main color is Dawn Patrol and the um, heel and toe is, um, it's just periwinkle, it's a periwinkle color. And this is not an official colorway of the shop, but I'm thinking about when the shop opens next weekend, uh, maybe including a mini as like an add-on for the Dawn Patrol um, fingering weight socks or fingering weight skeins we'll see so yeah obviously socks there really isn't too too much to say about this um i've talked before that i prefer 48 stitches so that's what i did i don't know that this pattern actually goes that low so i kind of had to do some math i think it only went down to if i'm remembering correctly it only went down to 56 so i just kind of did the math and managed to get 48 stitch count socks. All right, still cruising. Um, we are done with finished objects, but I do have a few whips to talk about. After I talk about my whips works in progress, I will do a quick shop preview for you because my hand dyed yarn is officially launching next weekend and so I will give you a preview of all the colorways I will have available. I am so 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 excited about this collection. Um, if you were not present for the last episode of the podcast it is the Wilmy collection since we just moved back to Wilmington but I'm saving that for the end. Next on my list is my little black cardigan. This has been on many an episode of the podcast because I have been working on it for over two years. Maybe even over three years. I'm not entirely, <laughs> not entirely sure how long this has been on my needles, but it has been forever. And it will not be much longer because I have one sleeve left. Let's see if I can show this off properly. Just a fiddling around here. Okay, there it is. So it is such a simple, cute sweater. And it is Malabrigo uh, lace weight yarn held double, which I think that the yarn is potentially the best part about this thing. I mean, it is so soft. I am so excited to wear it. Um, I just finished up with the second sleeve sleeve cap, um, which means no more short rows. I am just doing stockinette for the rest. So I'm hoping to finish this up by the end of the week. This, I, I don't know if it's me and the way I'm reading it. I, this is the most complicated pattern I have ever done. And it really isn't a complicated construction. Like it's a pretty standard cardigan. I've knit many a sweater, many a cardigan. I don't understand why I cannot wrap my head around this one, but it has been so difficult for me. Um, and I really, I just think it's the writing and I really do think it's me because I went on Ravelry to see if other people were finding it as difficult. And I was a little bit embarrassed to find that nobody found it difficult but me. So don't let it deter you. It's just, for some reason, my brain's 
not working the pattern correctly. That being said, I mean, I know there are mistakes in here, but I love this sweater. I do love the finished objects and I cannot wait to wear it this fall. I think it'll be super cute. I'm hoping to get some like walnut buttons for it. Oh, you know what? I said that the sleeve is the last thing that I have to do, but I actually also have a collar band as well. So depending on how well my brain can adjust to that, it may be some time yet. I bumped the camera, so we're gonna go back a little bit. Cool. Um, little black cardigan. Love, love, love that pattern. What I love even more I'm learning is my habitation throw. So I picked up my habitation throw, I picked my habitation throw back up recently. Um, it was kind of in a basket in the closet just because it was bulky. I didn't want to take it places with me. But I picked it back up and I just absolutely love this pattern. It is so mindless and meditative and just gorgeous, especially using a homespun house minis. Um, and I'm thinking, I was thinking the other day that the habitation throw to me is like the half and half wrap is for everyone else. Now I'm sure I would also love the half and half wrap. I have not made one yet, but I just like the habitation throw does it for me, I swear. So it makes me want to cast on another when I'm done with this one. So here she is in all her glory. Whoop. And so we are now, these are the two ends. So uh, as many of you already know, the habitation throw kind of starts at a point, comes out to the two points and then comes back in. So the fact that the rows are now this short means we are really starting to decrease back into that point and we are getting pretty dang close to the end here. So really excited to have the habitation throw as you can see my couch is blue and i think all of those colors will go really really well with the couch so i'm excited to have that finished that's the magic ball i have left of that one and then here's the other one i have i'm not even sure that i'm gonna need all of the two of these um so we'll see how it goes i might have some extras um but yeah Extra is never a bad thing with me. In fact, I don't think anything really helps you see your stash like moving. And I have so many boxes of full skeins, of half skeins, of 20 gram skeins, of like everywhere, bits and bobs everywhere. Um, and so I was like going through my stash and organizing my stash. And I was, as I was picking through, you know, of course, every time you look at your stash, you're like, oh, this would be great for a such and such. And you're like, oh, I can't wait to knit with this. I can't wait to knit with that. And so I'm kind of re-inspired by my stash, which is a really exciting thing because it means that I am not tempted to buy anything at the moment. And so really, really excited to just kind of stash bust for the next year. Um, I think I'm more than happy to just knit with stash now granted i haven't been in a yarn shop in a while and so if i happened upon a yarn shop and i walked inside i don't know that i would not walk away with more skeins um but if a yarn shop does not appear in front of me i'm just happy to knit with stash um for for at least a little while and i'm starting to include my hand dyed yarn in my stash so you know <laughs> the last work in progress i have um is something i just cast on now you guys know that i am not doing cast ons until a few more things are off my needles um, but i did cast these on just because it's a really quick knit and i am still casting on socks so i have these <laughs> these are called cozy little toes they are baby socks, of course, because this is not fit in my foot. Um, and the pattern is free on Ravelry. It is by Judy Kathler, Kathler, whatever shows up on the screen. Um, 
and it's really really simple and obviously really quick because it's like the size of your hand um, but my friend just found out that she is having a little girl so I am knitting her some socks and um, when we have our big reunion I will get to congratulate her on becoming a mother and give her a little bit of a gift for the baby these are knit out of some stash yarn I have and I would really love to tell you the brand because I do love this yarn um, I don't even really want to guess what it is because I don't want to tell you wrong I have had this in my stash for years and years and I have actually a like baby blue or steely blue um, skein that is the exact same so I might knit even more baby socks with that um, I am at that age where all of my friends are getting married and having babies and doing really cool things with their lives and so I am kind of starting a little bit of a gift box um, that I just keep in my closet and I knit like all the baby things and all the hats and simple things really great gifts so that um, whenever I need to pull from it I can um, and so I'm gonna start kind of building that up once I get more off my needles um, speaking of things that are on my needles I am aware that I have not talked about a few things today um, I for one thing that's in my mind is my other shawl or my wrap I mean the wrap I'm designing I did not show that just not much progress um, especially with the move and then I know I also didn't show my temperature blanket really stalled on that uh have not touched that since we moved either so i need to catch up on that and then i've decided that for the temperature blanket i am only really going to show that like once every couple of months because it is so massive it's you have a really hard time getting it out and about and so yeah just going to avoid that except when there's significant progress cool with that we can talk about the shop update um after the shop update i don't know that i'm really gonna have much time for a life update but i mean you already know about the biggest one we are back in wilmington and i am going back to the same company i was at doing um working with young men and young women who struggle with um, substance misuse and addiction. But instead of being in the direct care role that I was in before, I will be doing more program management. So kind of overseeing operations, um, which I'm really, really excited about. Really excited. Um, so I start that Monday. But those are all the life updates. So we can just avoid that and get into the shop update here. Next Saturday, the 20th, Fiber by Day is officially launching. Um, I will offer two bases at the moment and then we'll expand from there. So right now it is going to be a twist sock slash fingering weight yarn and then we will have a squishy DK. Um, and so I have tried to pull one of each for each colorway. So if you're on Instagram, you have seen all of these, but that's okay. We can still talk about them. Um, this is River Walk. So this will be the twist sock, and then this is our DK. Um, both bases are made with extra fine merino yarn, um, but the sock is going to have 15% nylon in it as well. So now, river walk. And I thought I thought I had grabbed a DK and a fingering, but I grabbed just a fingering. But this is azalea which is a really punchy pink. And azalea is kind of the city flower for Wilmington. Um, we have an azalea fest every year. So that's where that comes from. Again, I know I mentioned this kind of earlier in the episode, but this is the Wilmy collection, collection. So everything in this collection is kind of in some way inspired by Wilmington. This is the dub. Anyone who doesn't know, Wilmington is home of UNC Dub, UNCW, um, which is my alma mater and Christian's alma mater. And their colors are like blue and teal. So you'll see that 
and these. The dub followed up by Seahawk, which is the UNCW mascot. So again, lots of teals and oranges and blues, some green, some yellow. Sometimes colorways will vary a lot between bases, but we try to at least keep them consistent between dye lots. Princess Av, which has made many an appearance on this podcast, so it won't be anything new. Inspired by some of the brick buildings along Princess Avenue here in Wilmington. This has been a crowd favorite. I just showed you the socks, but this is Dawn Patrol. Inspired by the many, many early mornings I have spent on the beach watching Christian surf. Two more. So this is Megalodon. I feel like I don't have to explain this one too much. And lastly, my personal favorite, we have a sock set that comes with a progress keeper. And this is inspired by a lemonade stand we have here in Wilmington. This is called Island Squeeze. So it is a really pretty yellow, green, and blue skein with a hot pink contrast mini. And then here is, let's hopefully you can see this well. This is the, woo, where's the camera? Progress Keeper that it comes with. Just a lim little lemon slice. And this is from my friend Melissa over at Hidden Night Gems. Um, you guys have seen some of the earrings that I wear that is also by Hidden Night Gems. And so you should definitely go check out our shop. I will link it in the description box. But yeah, so we will have several of each base and colorway and so definitely come check it out we're going to launch the site noon eastern time next saturday august 20th and hope to see you there um, if i don't pop up here sooner then i will see you in exactly one month to give you yet another update on all of the things that i've been knitting what I didn't mention in the beginning because I was rushing along is that you can find me on Instagram at Fiber by Day and you can find me on Ravelry at Days Jam. All right. Bye guys. Happy knitting.